Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Rachel Varga podcast. Today, I have a beautiful guest with us. If you're listening to the audio on the podcast here or watching the video on the Rachel Varga YouTube channel, welcome. We have with us Dr. Trevor Cates, and we had the absolute pleasure of connecting in San Diego last year and, you know, as soon as I saw Dr. Kate, I was like, oh my gosh, who is this goddess just aging phenomenally well? And then lo and behold, I hear that, yes, your specialty is also in skin health and, and skincare and all sorts of wonderful things. So it's just great to be able to collaborate with like-minded individuals. There's lots of you know, people like Dr. Trevor Cates and I out there that really care about you and your skin health and helping you bring your greatest version forward on the inside and out. Welcome, Dr. Trevor Cates. Thank you. It's so great to be here with you. Yeah, it's great to, you know, be able to connect and, and see each other. And I'm looking forward to seeing you again a little bit later this year as well. So what would you say some of the biggest trends in skincare are that you're seeing that you would potentially, you know, as a skin expert yourself, maybe want to redirect people towards looking at instead? Yeah, of course. Well, there is there is definitely a big interest in more natural skincare products. That mm -hmm. there's a big shift towards that. So a lot of brands are starting to make natural skincare products that didn't necessarily used to make natural skincare products, and a lot of newer brands are coming um, coming up with natural skincare options. And that's great that there are so many options. But what's happened with that? is it sort of diluted what it means to be a natural skincare line. And in fact, there actually is, there really aren't any regulations around the word natural, at least in the United States. I'm not sure about in Canada, but- um, There's the no States, back of the bottle marketing police. You hit the nail on the head there. I love that you're talking about this, continue. Yeah, yeah. And so people see things like natural or hypoallergenic and a, you know, on a bottle or a claim and, a, and a, an advertisement. But that doesn't actually mean anything. And so I, I'm really trying to help educate people on what it really means to have a natural skincare line, what to look for, and what to expect. Because the other big myth about natural skincare products is that they don't work. <laughs> and so um, that is true about many, but there are also some things to look for to help make sure that you're getting results from your skincare products. Mm -hmm. I think that's fantastic. So what you were basically alluding to was the concept of like greenwashing or, you know, pink washing and things like that. And Stacey Lindsay, she's the former contributing articles editor of Goop. We actually did a charity conversation around conscious beauty. And we are rewriting the script for beauty marketing and helping people become more conscious consumers. And yes, those donations to a LA women's shelter and Victoria Mustard Seed Food Bank went through today. So thank you everyone for taking part in that charity conversation. The proceeds have been officially donated. And I think the more and more that we can share on this topic of really not just looking for the word natural or green or clean beauty, because scientifically they don't really mean anything. So why don't you kind of shed light on that topic for us? Yeah, absolutely. And I think it, and certainly it is really important to to choose natural skincare products and choose ones that are clean, that contain organic and natural ingredients. I think that's very important. That's why I created the Spot Doctor skincare line. Um, and so what I, I've been a naturopathic physician for 20 years and I have been educating my patients for a long time. And then also myself living a more uh, clean, natural, um, you know, choices with skincare and food and all of that. And when, um, what I was noticing with my patients, I'd, I'd give them a big long list of things to avoid. Um, and, and that was great. But then I also realized it's not just about what you avoid, but also you want the 
want the products to have an effect. So the first thing is to think about ingredients or look at ingredients on your skincare products and be aware of what's in there. And so there are ingredients like synthetic fragrance or parabens or, um, you know, in sunscreens like oxybenzone that mm, there have yes. been some concern about as far as potential endocrine disrupting effects. Which means hormone disruption. Yeah. And so these class of chemicals, endocrine disrupting chemicals, hormone disrupting chemicals, um, what happens is they can bind to hormone receptors in the body and they either mimic the function, they alter the function of, of the hormones. And they're, you know, and this has been known to in the research, this group of chemicals has been known to be linked to things like infertility, thyroid disease, obesity, even cardiovascular disease, a number of different health issues, even uh, connections to, to certain types of cancer like breast cancer, or prostate cancer. And so, you know, we, we are exposed to so many of these chemicals in our environment and our air, water, food, and personal care products. So it's nice to uh, know that we can reduce our overall exposure in certain things. We don't have control over every different way we're exposed to these, but there certainly are some places we have control. And, and one of those is with personal care products because it's really the total load of exposures. And um, so I encourage people, especially the products that you use on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, if you go in and you go get a facial, you know, maybe once a month or every few months, and it may have a few and fragrances or something, your body is able to clear out some of those, but it's the things that we're exposed to ongoing on a regular basis that are really the biggest concern. Mm -hmm. And some of the other things that hormone disrupting uh, products can contribute to are accelerated hair loss and reduction of libido. And this is actually something my husband and I, he's a pro athlete we talk about in our masterclass on lockyourvitality.com. You can check that out. And yes, I fully agree with you that we really need to limit our toxic load. So if we're using all of these products in our beauty routine that are heavily fragranced, a lot of times those fragrances, that little ingredient there can be brand secret. They don't actually have to say what it is. It could be like 70 ingredients actually. And then in our hair products, shampoo, conditioner, I get asked what hair products I use all the time. Uh, yes, as clean as possible is always important. And also what you're using in your home. So those Glade plugins, those aerosolized, you know, hairsprays or deodorizers or Lysol sprays, you really want to be avoiding all of that. And Dr. Trevor Cates, you have a really, really cool background because not only are you a naturopathic physician, you also have training in spiritual psychology, which is so fascinating. So yes, this podcast is all about body, mind, spirit, energy. So we're going to be diving in into that in just a second here. But what can you tell us about the skin's microbiome and what we can do to support it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a great question. And it, it's so fascinating. The research is unfolding on this topic. And when I was looking for my patients for a natural skincare line that would, would meet our criteria, you know, because we don't want it to just be clean, we want it to be effective. I was looking at the research of what's missing a lot of the natural skincare lines out there. And there were a few things I found. First of all, I don't want to skip over the fact that what we do internally has a huge impact on oh, our skin. Yeah. Um, that's why I wrote my book, Clean Skin from Within, because I have a whole two-week program on foods to eat, foods to avoid, you know, Love healthy it. lifestyle choices, because so much of what we put in our body is, uh, you know, our skin is an outer reflection of inner health. And so what we put in our body um, shows up really on our skin. <laughs> so, so, of course, that's very, very important. And our gut health, impacts our skin health in through the gut microbiome is is a big part of that and so the microbiome the microorganisms that live in our digestive tract and help keep it healthy also impact the skin microbiome which are all the microorganisms that live on the skin and keep it looking glowing and healthy and free of blemishes and breakouts and aging gracefully and all of that good stuff so a large part of that is from what's going on from the inside out with the foods that we eat. 
but what one are, of the, sorry, go ahead. What are some of your favorite tips for us to promote a healthy gut microbiome? I know obviously that's all covered in your book and your two week training, but can you give us maybe like three tips that we could do today to support our gut health? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, eating a healthy diet is just a big part of it. Getting plenty of fiber is important. Eating a variety of, of produce because a lot of us, first of all, we don't get enough fiber. Um, most people don't get enough fiber and that really does help with supporting a healthy gut and the gut microbiome. And we also tend to eat the same foods over and over again, rather than a, a diverse, uh, a variety of different produce, which research now shows that when you eat a variety of different fruits and vegetables, that actually helps support a healthy gut microbiome. So that would be another thing. And then of course, avoiding certain things like sugar, sugar is going to create more imbalances, processed foods, foods that don't really nourish you that um, you know, I think it's, you know, best as much as possible to avoid those to help with the, the gut microbiome. Yeah, that's fantastic. And the funny thing is my husband, there are foods that he actually needs to avoid. And then there's foods I need to avoid in my diet. And we determine this through, you know, working with the nutritionist, doing some lab testing. So do you recommend that for people that you work with to actually get their gut tested? And how do we do that? Yeah, there's certainly plenty that people can do on their own. That's why I have the book. It's, you know, it's a basic guideline for how to help with your, your gut microbiome is one of the, the microbiome is one of the big root causes that we need to address when it comes to the skin. But for, there are some people that it's just, it's not enough. Like they, you know, they, they need some additional support maybe because they've taken a lot of antibiotics or they have been under a lot of stress or other medications that they've taken. Um, a lot of it has to do with genetics and lifestyle that could have impacted their gut microbiome. And it's not always just food as medicine isn't always just enough. Sometimes we need a little extra support. So for those people, I do recommend testing. And so you really have to do that through a naturopathic physician or a functional medicine doctor who's trained to really understand how to do the testing. Um, because conventional doctors typically don't look at the gut health the same way they look. Um, they don't necessarily look at optimizing health. They're more concerned about just keeping you alive. And, and you know, and it's great to have a lot of the conventional medicine approach to, um, you know, to, to uh, you know, to help people in emergency situations and things. And it's a nice to get an integrative approach. But when it comes to something like the gut microbiome, it really is um, a great way to, um, to help address it by doing like a comprehensive digestive stool analysis, something like that. Um, maybe looking for, you know, doing parasitology tests, depending on what the person presents with. But to do a pretty comprehensive gut microbiome test is, is really helpful because then you can know how do we want to address those because there are certain probiotics that might be helpful. Other ones may not be, but if you get this information, it can be very beneficial. Also certain herbs or even medications that could be beneficial and helping address some of the um, imbalances with the gut. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. If you're listening and you're a busy mother or working professional, you know, you don't have time to scroll through the different Google articles or watch the different YouTube videos that are going to tell you do this, that, and the other thing for this skin condition. And that might not even be the right information for you anyways. So when you go ahead and get these different type of lab tests done, you are really honing in on what your personal physiology wants. So this is really where, you know, custom skincare is coming in, you know, being able to customize your diet and lifestyle in a way that works with your constitution. Dr. Trevor Cates and I, we have a colleague, Dr. Alka Cook. She was an emergency room medical doctor who transitioned into functional medicine to better serve her patients. So if you're a physician, because there's a lot of aesthetic physicians and nurses listening to this, a lot of times we want to talk about this stuff with our patients, but we literally just don't have either the time or the know-how. So these are really layers that you want to bring into your awareness to help support healthy skin from the inside out. Yep, 
Absolutely. Um, so, and then, you know, the, of course the inside out approach is so important. And then what we put on our skin, going back to that, um, can also impact our skin microbiome. So there are certain ingredients that can create disruption in the skin microbiome, while others can create a healthy environment. Just like eating fiber is gonna help promote the, the healthier bacteria, putting certain ingredients on your skin can help them flourish and help the good bacteria and microorganisms flourish and create more of that balance. And one of the things too that we've learned from the research is the pH of skincare products is also really important, the pH of the formulas. And so when we're looking at the skin, it actually has mild acidity to it. And so if you're putting products on it that have a high pH or even a neutral pH, it's not helping support the healthy pH and that, um, and setting up um, a good environment for the skin microbiome to flourish. So, the um, you know that's an important thing to look at too, and to ask about your skincare products is what is the pH of the products and. Sometimes you can't always find that information, but you can also get a pH strip and just check the products yourself as long as they're not all oil. If it's an all oil blend, you're not gonna be able to check the pH, but, um, but otherwise you can check the pH. And if it's over 5.5, it's really gonna be too high for your skin. And also you don't want it to be too acidic either. So 4.6 to five is what is for the face in particular is what I consider ideal when I look at the research and that's what I formulated my skincare products to, to be within that pH range. Mm -hmm. Yes, I know that you have. We talked about this in a previous interview that you can watch at rachelmarga.ca slash blog. You can just look for our video interview. We were actually very color coordinated. In that interview. <laughs> You're in this like beautiful goddess yellow and I was in this baby blue from like the same color palette. I love it. It was adorable. Can you tell us a little bit about probiotic skincare? Because we're seeing this pop up in even some pharmaceutical grade skincare products. What's your take on probiotic skincare right now? Um, you know, I think it's still an emerging science. There's a lot we don't know about the skin microbiome. I mean, we're still learning a lot about the gut microbiome and that's been coming out in the research a lot more before the skin microbiome. So this is definitely more and is needed to really understand because the the microbiota that are on the skin are very different than what's on the gut. So just because something people take it internally for the for the gut, like you know, yogurt or lactobacillus does not mean that it's necessarily going to be good for the skin. So I think that's one mistake that people are making is they're saying, oh well, you know, things like bifidobacteria and lactobacillus are great for our gut. So they must be great to put on the skin too. And that's not really necessarily the case. Now, um, when, when you're doing like DIY and we're looking at something like yogurt, the lactic acid, because of the mild acidity, is going to it actually could be beneficial for your skin. So there, it's not like it's all bad, but it's um, the science of what's on our skin is very different. And so, you know, I think that there there are some companies doing some good things as far as finding products that can help with certain conditions like like eczema, um, and maybe even acne. Um, so it's really exciting to see some of that come to light. But I would say the majority of the skincare products that I've seen out there that say they have probiotics, they're, um, I'm not sure if it's you know really valid. Uh, we definitely need more research on that because here are some of the concerns. First of all, you have to identify the right kinds of micro uh, microorganisms on the skin that are beneficial. And everyone is so different when it comes to the skin. We just, who we're around, if we have pets in the home, the type of hygiene we have, there's so many things that impact our skin microbiome. So it's very complex because it's on the outside and it's not a contained environment. So the research on it is very difficult to identify specific microorganisms that benefit the skin. Um, and then even if you, when you do identify the right um, like bacteria and the right strain, then you have to isolate them and keep them alive. 
<laughs> and <Yep. laughs> out, uh, off the skin and keeping them alive in a, in a skincare product that's not refrigerated um, is, is very challenging. And then there are the regulations around the fact that there can't be live bacteria in skincare products, um, according to the FDA. So then I'm, um, it kind of leaves a lot of challenges for manufacturers to create probiotic skincare. So mm -hmm. some of the things to think about is thinking about like prebiotics and what kind of helps support the micro microbiome to flourish. So things like looking at the pH of the products and things that naturally support healthy balance are what we really want to focus on at this time. Mm -hmm. I'm so proud of you for just laying it out like that because I'm the same way. I really won't jump on the bandwagon of, you know, probiotic skincare, CBD infused skincare. I kind of go by the barometer of what's in medical grade skincare. What is the research that I'm seeing with some of these wonderful companies that I work with that have been around for many, many, many years, if not, you know, well over 10 years of formulating with third party lab testing on their products as well. So when it comes to trends, I do not jump on the trend bandwagon. I have a good 70 year old. Let it be fully kind of sussed out for a while. And this also I take into my practice as an aesthetic nurse when I go and uh, perform treatments and also when I teach other physicians and nurses internationally on procedures and options as well. So while we're on the topic of you know, skincare and products and FDA regulations and all of that, I happen to know that the spa doctor ended up making its way onto eBay and Amazon, these third party auction websites. And so this is a big problem. As soon as I saw it, I was like, oh no, I felt so bad for you when I started to see your product showing up there because this is a big problem with counterfeit skincare. So tell me a little bit about what you know about counterfeit skincare. Well, um, I, you know, I think that a lot of the products that are, we, I mean, we actually sell the Spot Doctor products on Amazon. So it's not like all of the products that are out there are counterfeit. Um, but it's hard I, to know what is and what isn't. Yeah. So that's the challenge is that um, we keep an eye on, um, on Amazon and eBay. And of course, you know, that's great. Sometimes people get products, a hold of products, or they buy a bunch and then um, they will try and sell it. But if, if somebody has a large number of inventory, then we start to question that because we know we, you know, we know how much we're selling and there shouldn't be a large amount. So right lot at the end of last year was when we had our biggest problem, which is we noticed on Amazon that there was an account that from China that was selling large had on inventory large amounts of the Spot Doctor skincare products, um, which we knew was not possible. And so we immediately contacted Amazon, and within a few days, Amazon took care of it and they got rid of that um, supplier. I don't know all the backside of that and what they had to do and who these people were, but um, but yeah, it, it's it's I I kind of wonder. I sent in an email to my list, I post on social media to my followers saying, don't buy on Amazon right now because we're trying to get rid of this one supplier that we know is not valid. This is, they would be, it would be a counterfeit. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, I don't know what to say to people that besides just be careful. And um, I think it's best to go directly to the manufacturer and order directly from the manufacturer when you can. Um, so, I know that recently we ran out of inventory at the spa doctor, but Amazon still had some. So <laughs> I know some of our customers went over to Amazon and that's okay. You know, that's, that's great. But, um, but really still it's best to go typically direct to the manufacturer. Yeah, that's great. And that's so, that's so interesting getting your insight on that because yes, you want to make your, your products available to people wherever they are and have it be convenient for them to get. But in general, I am suggesting that any type of skincare product, personal care product, supplement, household cleaning product that you do either get from the manufacturer or an approved distributor. And if you want to find out if a website or person is an approved distributor, you just send a quick email to the manufacturer. They'll, they'll tell you. And it's really important that what Stacey Lindsay and I were talking about in our charity conversation around 
conscious beauty and being a more conscious consumer is you also just want to take quote unquote inventory of who you're supporting online as well. Do you want to be supporting this, you know, random distributor off this website, or do you want to be supporting someone else who really is trying to do and make an impact in what they're doing? So how would you, uh, how would you sort of position that? Well, absolutely. You know, I think, um, <laughs> I'm, you know, with the spot doctor, I'm the only owner. I've never taken any outside funding, investing, uh, investors, um, I don't have a partner. It's I'm the C everything. I have a, a team of people that help me. Um, and so I think sometimes people forget that I'm, it's, you know, we're just a small company and we're really trying to provide the best options for people. Certainly I want to grow the company, but um, you know, it's, I think it's really great. I think there are more and more indie beauty brands mm -hmm. uh, popping up, independent beauty. And it's such a great way to um, try something new and support smaller businesses that are trying to do a good thing and grow. So, you know, the, uh, when I, I went to the, um, I think it's the Indie Beauty Expo, IBE. Yeah, and yeah. It's so full. It's so great to see all these other people starting companies and, and small beauty brands that are, are making a difference that used to be so much harder to do that, but it's nice that we can now do that. And I think even larger brands are starting to look to the the indie beauty brands for ideas and kind of bring them on board. And so it's, it's an interesting time in the beauty and skincare industry. <laughs> yeah, I think that's fantastic. It's great getting your perspective as well. Yes, I've been keeping my eye on that organization and uh, I look forward to doing some collaboration with them as well. So now let's get into the other part of your background. So you are a, you know, globally recognized naturopath in the space of especially skin beauty and your products as the spa doctor. I love that, that handle and name. I just think that's so darling and just, just wonderful. I love it. It's perfect. But you also have training in spirituality. So tell me how that lends into the mix, how that infuses into what you do not only as a mother, as a business owner, but also in how you interact with people, places, and things. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, I have a, a, a master's in spiritual psychology and I, I did this, I went and did this program at the University of Santa Monica, which I don't think they're doing, it's, it was a two year program when I was doing, I don't think they have a master's program anymore, but when I did it, um, I was attracted to it because I had been seeing patients for a while, I, you know, uh, probably 13, 14 years at that point. And I was noticing that a lot of resistance that patients would have that was beyond anything rational. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so I, um, I started thinking, what is it that, so they would start uh, doing a lot of weight loss programs. They would start on a program and then they would fall off it. Even knowing in their mind that they were getting better, that they were losing the weight, they would revert back to old habits. And, and so That's I right. started to realize that there was a component beyond just you know rational thought of, I know this is good for me. So I started to thinking about more about the emotional, maybe even the spiritual component to this. And that piqued my curiosity. And that's what, when I found out about this master's program, because I wanted to find tools for my patients to dig deeper, to understand why they were having trouble following something. And I also realized that as a practitioner, I think it's so important for us to also do the own work, our own work and to com continue to do everything we can to personally evolve so we can help further help our patients. Because if we're still dealing with our own emotional um, issues and our own spiritual quest or issues or disconnection, then um, it's harder to help other people. So we got to, you know, make sure our light is continuing to, to be bright and shiny so that we can, we can help other people. And um, so a lot of it too, doing that was for my own personal spiritual growth. And so it was fascinating to do really fantastic. And of course it's, it's an ongoing journey. That was just sort of like a little kickstart, 
but it's it's been continuing to um, evolve and change. Yeah, that's so beautiful. Thanks so much for sharing that. And as a mother and, you know, running your own company and, and your husband and, you know, being part of this thriving community of like-minded health experts that you and I are a part of, it's just so incredible to, to be there. We are supporting one another, Dr. Trevor Keats and I, we support each other in various ways and so many other incredible people out there that are doing their best to share a little bit of love in the light uh, in this world in their own special way. So if you were having a conversation with your younger self before you were a mother, before you were married, and you really just wanted to share some loving advice to support healthy self-esteem, a healthy consciousness, uh, just a, a more loving and beautiful way of being not only with yourself, but people, places, and things, what advice would you give yourself? Well, um, I think one of the things that we often lose connection with is with, with nature and our authentic self. I think we oftentimes get caught up in the day-to-day -day life. We're inside working, we're on our computers, we're on our electronic devices, and we lose connection with what's outside and what's around us. So um, I, you know, I think that's actually kind of not really answering your question because I think when I was a kid, I was outside a lot more mm -hmm. than, yeah. than I am now. But I, I realized too that, it's it's such an important thing to reconnect and that we and there's so many benefits to being outdoors and part of that is just the um you know the freedom and and getting some sunshine and feeling good about being outdoors but when we go back to the microbiome the soil outdoors is beneficial for us in that if we're getting in gardening, if we're getting, we're going out on walks, all of these, um, they can be microorganisms coming up from the soil, especially after a nice rain. And all of that is beneficial for our ecosystem, just like it's important for the planet. And I think that's one thing that we have gotten really disconnected from. And I encourage people to get back to. So what about tree hugging? Do you recommend tree hugging? <laughs> of course. <laughs> I'm definitely that person in the forest that you'll see hugging the trees. Every time I walk, I always make, uh, you know, uh, I, I remember to touch the leaves and the trees as I'm walking by and take my shoes off, put my feet on the ground. We have lots of clover in the yard here and it, oh, it just feels so nice. Mm -hmm. And then dipping your feet in water and just grounding yourself. There's so many benefits to just grounding ourselves and being in nature and being around less electromagnetic energy. So speaking of energy, right? These are really critical ways to not only help your body, mind, spirit, energy, but when that's all balanced and aligned, you're going to be your most truest, authentic version of yourself and your skin's going to be better. So do you have any closing remarks for our conversation here on the Rachel Barker podcast? Yeah, absolutely. So I, you know, I think a lot of times people are looking for a lot of um, answers in skincare products. And I think, you know, when it comes to uh, healthy skin, glowing skin, like of course you have too. Um, and I, I want to remind people that of course, skincare is a really great option. And of course, healthy eating is a really important option. But also a lot of that radiance that you see with people comes on a deeper level and this this you know authenticity this confidence comes from inside and that makes you really naturally radiant and beautiful so i want to encourage people to look at all of those aspects it, what are you how are you supporting your body are you, what are you feeding yourself with and that is the food as well as your thoughts your skincare products, all of that. You need to have good self-care and um, all of that shows up on your skin as beautiful radiance. Wonderful. Yeah, I agree with you. Check, check, check on all those levels. And thank you very much for the, the wonderful kind words coming from you as the spa doctor complimenting me on my skin as well. <laughs> and speaking of support, how can we support you? Where can we find you? 
Oh, well, you can find, you can find me at thespadoctor.com. It's T-H-E-S-P-A-D-R.com. So doctor is abbreviated D-R. And um, I also have a podcast and which you are coming on as a guest. And, um, and then there's also the skin quiz, which I think is a really great tool. I love that, by the way. That is such <laughs> a great idea. Okay, so it's theskinquiz.com, and you can find out what messages your skin might be trying to tell you about your health, what you can do about it, find out which, what's your skin personality type, are you an Amber, Emmett, Olivia, Sage, yeah, so um, theskinquiz.com. Wonderful. Well, thank you everyone for listening to this episode on the Rachel Varga podcast. And I cannot wait to be on the Spot Doctor podcast coming up just shortly here as well. Thank you very much for joining us, doing the work that you do and helping people all over the world. You know, we kind of do very similar things, right? Just helping people become their most beautiful versions. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for everything you do.